Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom, and I'm Mike. It's our health unit for today, and we're not talking about having a good diet and taking good medicine and stuff like that so much. We're actually talking about something called meditation, which means kind of sitting still and closing your eyes and focusing on your breathing and stuff like that.、Uh, do you do meditation, Mike? Have you、um, ever done it? Om, Om Mani Padme Om. Oh、uh, yeah, I guess you would say that if、oh, you're. I can't talk, Tom.、Right? I'm meditating. Oh、um, well, then you shouldn't be on this show because that's true. We do need to talk. All right, but... I'll stop meditating. Yes, I do some meditation. I try. It's hard though. It really is. It's like oh, it's so easy. You just sit there quietly in a quiet room and you clear all the thoughts out of your mind. You make your mind stop thinking. Have you ever tried to do that? It's really, really hard to do, but it is really, really good for you. Not only can it help you relax and calm down, and you know, feel less stress, but they're actually showing it has a big effect on your body itself. Right? You can control your blood pressure and your heart rate. It can help healing your body and all sorts of stuff just by sitting quietly in a room by yourself, taking you know, ten, twenty minutes to clear your mind, but. If you think that's easy, it's actually a lot more challenging than you would imagine.、Uh, yes, I've tried this myself before to focus on my breathing, but good, it's amazing、good. how quickly your mind starts thinking about other things,、mm -hmm. and then you have to remind yourself, "Gee, I'm supposed to be focusing、yep. on my breathing,、yep. so you need to bring your thinking back there."、Yep. But I did want to mention that、uh, when I talked about meditation with some friends many years ago, they said, "Ooh, you can't just、uh, meditate without any proper training because、oh. if you meditate without..." That training, you're letting the chance, or you're allowing evil spirits to come into your body, or something like that. Really? So,、uh, yeah, I'd be careful about this.、My、that's、gosh. what that's what people told me. So,、wow. uh, indeed, I guess if you want to do meditation, you should probably be trained properly. I guess you could just do it better and more efficiently. So, even without the evil ghosts, having a a coach or an expert give you some tips would be a good idea. Get some、uh, advice from somebody who knows what they're doing, but in any case, we are talking about the magic of meditation and how it is good for our health. So let's get to it. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson right now. Juliet gets stressed out by her numerous work deadlines. However, she never rushes and never complains to her bosses, nor does she get angry at herself for not being able to keep up. Instead, she practices self-care techniques, including meditation. In fact, her meditation practice has helped her manage her stress levels so well that her colleagues have started coming to her for advice. They want to know how she stays so calm and collected. Meditation, at its most basic, is focusing one's mind. The word comes from the Latin for to ponder. There are several different meditation styles, but in many of them, practitioners focus their sole attention on a single element, such as their breathing. The practice has been taking place for thousands of years, and humans all over the world have benefited from it. It's difficult to pin down meditation's exact origins, but experts believe that its modern form has its roots in ancient Buddhist custom. Beginning in India, Buddhism eventually made its way elsewhere, including China. In the seventh century, a Japanese monk traveled to China to study under a Buddhist master. Upon returning to Japan, he created the practice of zazen, or Zen meditation. This is the most familiar meditation practice today, in which a person sits with their legs crossed in the lotus position and focuses on their breath. Meditation remained an Eastern practice for centuries, but when global travel became more common, the practice moved west, primarily through the studies of missionaries and scholars. Its popularity in the West exploded in the mid-20th century, and it since entered mainstream society. Okay, everybody, let's get to it. Let's talk about the magic of meditation, how it can change your life, and how we think you ought to do it. So we've got an example here of some woman who has a career, and it says Juliet gets stressed out by her numerous work deadlines. And this probably applies to a lot of people here in Taiwan who have career jobs, who work in offices, and of course they've got those deadlines. They've got the boss looking over their shoulder, going, "Hey, when is that?" 
project going to be done? It's very necessary. It's very vital. It's urgent. You've got to finish that really quick. So that's what a deadline is.、Uh, the time you're supposed to get something done. And then we've also got this phrase, stressed out.、Uh, to stress out means that you're under a lot of pressure and you're kind of nervous about it. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're stressed out, then all the things that you have to do, all those deadlines, all the people waiting for you, all the things that are causing you worry、uh, in your life, this is really causing you to be unhappy, to be、uh, to have trouble sleeping. Maybe you can't eat. Maybe you're in a bad mood. You're definitely stressed out. So Juliet gets like that. Sure, she's a busy working lady. Her boss needs this. Her friends need that. If she has a boyfriend, husband, family, they might need things from her too. So she's got a lot of pressure. However, she never rushes and never complains to her bosses, nor does she get angry at herself for not being able to keep up. So there you go. Those are typical things people might do when they get stressed out or too stressed out. They rush, they hurry because they have too much to do. But the things they do quickly, they don't do very well. They might complain to people, their boss, say, "Boss, you're giving me too much work," or complain to their friends about the trouble they're having. She doesn't do either of those things. She doesn't get angry. She doesn't lose her temper and snap at people and get angry at them when they're giving her extra trouble that she already has、uh, enough of. And、uh, she is always able to keep up, or she doesn't get angry for not being able to keep up. If you keep up, you are able to do the things you are expected to do. You're able to meet your deadlines. You're able to to do the things that you told people that you would do and take care of yourself. You don't feel like you're kind of sinking under the water of all. All the work that you have, no, you're able to keep your head above the water. You're able to manage things and keep things in control. Yeah, you're basically able to go as fast as someone else is going, right? So、sure. if somebody's running in a race,、yep. you're trying to keep up with them or even get ahead of them. There you go. I was also going to say that sometimes when you learn a foreign language and you're talking to a native speaker of that language,、mm -hmm. sometimes it's difficult to keep up.、Mm. They're talking too fast, and you don't understand everything. They're saying, and pretty soon you feel lost. Absolutely. So, what does she do instead? Well, instead she practices self-care techniques, including meditation. She doesn't let the stress get to her. She doesn't get angry at people. So, instead of that, she practices self-care techniques. She does things that are good for herself. You know, going to the gym would be good, or making sure you're eating a good diet. This is self-care. Things to keep your body, mind, and life in general in good condition. And one of those things is meditation. Meditation. It says, in fact, her meditation practice has helped her manage her stress levels so well that her colleagues have started coming to her for advice. So she's so good at meditation; she does it so well, and it's so useful to her. Other people have noticed. Her colleagues, her coworkers, people in her office or company have noticed. So now they come to her. They're like, "Hey, Juliet, you're always so calm, even when you have a million things to do. How do you do it?" Meditation. That, of course, is the act of sitting still and focusing on your mantra or on your breathing or whatever. I did want to say that the verb there is to meditate. Sorry,、mm. I can't go to your party because I'm going to go meditate. And that's what she does here to manage her stress levels. And also notice in this sentence we've got the so that pattern. So so means to such a degree, and the that here means there is a result because of what happened before. So I could say that hey, I'm so angry that I'm shaking. I'm so angry because of what you said that I'm literally shaking. And maybe I need to do some meditation to calm down. So yes, her friends are asking her for advice. Hey, you do. That meditation thing, I'd like to do that too. They want to know how she stays so calm and collected. This term is often used together here, calm and collected. It just means you're relaxed. You kind of know what's going on, and you're not too nervous about things. Absolutely. So, what is meditation? Let's jump into our second paragraph and find out. Meditation, at its most basic, is focusing one's mind. We could write a whole book about meditation. Many people have, but at its most basic, the roots of meditation. Just talking about it in its most simple, fundamental way. It's focusing one's mind, focusing a person's mind, focusing your mind. Where does the word meditation come from? Well, the word comes from the Latin for to ponder. To ponder is basically to think about something, but think about it quite deeply and probably for quite a long time. Right? You might. 
ponder a big question like, "Gosh, what should I do with my future?" This is a big, difficult question. There's a lot of different things to think about. You have to ponder that and think about it very, very carefully, and probably take some time while you're thinking about it. You wouldn't want to stand there in a restaurant though and ponder what kind of soft drink should I have, and spend ten minutes going, "Hmm, should I have a cola or?" Oh, maybe a Seven Up or ooh, an iced tea. No, you wouldn't ponder that. You just think about it and decide. But something big and important, you definitely would want to ponder. Yeah, I'm going to ponder about what university to apply to,、mm. or I might ponder the meaning of life. Why are we here? Which religion should I believe in, etc. Wow. So basically, that's the root of this word. It just means to ponder or think about things, which、uh, sounds kind of like opposite to me. What meditations should be, because I thought meditation was all about not thinking,、uh-huh. emptying your mind of all your thoughts, and just focusing on your breathing. But here we've got the word focusing.、So So that's what meditation means to focus your mind on something. And again, this is the origin of the word,、uh, which means to ponder. Now there are several different meditation styles, but in many of them, practitioners focus their sole attention on a single element, such as their breathing. So we've got different kinds of meditation, different styles, but in a lot of them, the practitioner will focus your sole attention on just one thing. So a practitioner. Practitioner, of course, is a person who practices meditation. A person who has studied it and participates in meditation. These different styles、uh, can involve all sorts of different ways of meditating, but of course, breathing is one of the biggest parts of it. Breathing and trying to clear your mind. All right, so that's some basics about meditation. There's a lot more to come, though, and in the next part of our article, the second half for today, which will. Do right after our break. We'll look at the history of meditation, where it came from, and when it first started. So come on back for that. Hello, my name is Shelby. Today's 主题是 meditation 冥想。我们先看 Juliet 第一段第一行，好几个工作要截止，令 Juliet 感到非常焦虑。Stressed out 是紧张焦虑的。当然，你也可以省略 out， 只有 stressed 也是同样的意思。Stress 当名词的时候，它表示紧张、压力，或者是单字的重音。例如说 ，complain 这个字的重音在第二音节，我们就可以说 ，the stress of a complain is on the second syllable， 在第二句的地方。However， 它从来不着急，也不会因为跟不上而生气。Never nor 形成了对等连接词的语法。用两个否定副词，既不也不，连接两个子句，表达双重否定。要注意下半句的地方。Nor does she get angry at herself for not being able to keep up. 这是倒装句型。当否定副词放在句首前面的时候，例如这一句话里面的 nor 也不。那这个句子要写成倒装句哦，就是将助动词 does 搬到主词 she 的前面，而动词变成 get 的原型，就好像是疑问句，只是没有问号。Get angry at somebody 表示对某个人生气 ，at 后面就加对象，而 to keep up with somebody 就是赶上别人。只是现在呢，我们文章中没有受词，所以 with 也没有写，只保留 to keep up。在第四句 ，In fact， 他的冥想练习帮助他管理他的压力，成效好到他的同事都寻求他的建议。Meditation practice， 冥想练习 ，practice 还有其他意思，包含了实施、实行。有时候看到类似的短语。例如说 ，put the proposal into practice， 将计划付诸实行。Her colleagues come to her for advice. 她的同事呢，向她寻求建议。Come to somebody for something， 向谁寻求什么东西 ？For 后面要加想要的东西。例如说，我请她帮忙，就是我想要她的帮忙。I come to her for help. 在第二段第三句，有好几种不同的冥想方式，但在很多方式中
，实践者会将他们唯一的注意力集中在单一元素，例如呼吸。Practitioners 前面曾经说过 ，practice 当成实践，所以这里呢，变化它的字尾，再加 er， 变成了执行者。Medical practitioner 就是医生。Focus on 动词片语，专注在什么东西上，常看到用过去分词形态来表达，就变成了 be focused on something。它们都是表达相同的意思。So 当形容词，表示唯一的、单一的、only 的意思。We are going to take a short break now, but please stay tuned. We'll be right back. 好的那。Absolutely, but where did it start? Well, actually, that's a question without an easy answer. Next, we read it's difficult to pin down meditation's exact origins, but experts believe that its modern form has its roots in ancient Buddhist custom. So this is a good guess from the experts, the people who've studied meditation and its history, the people who've read writings about it, maybe from long ago. They know it probably comes from a Buddhist custom, so it's not from the Christian. Christian or Jewish or Muslim religion, but from the Buddhist religion. But as it says at the beginning of that sentence, it's difficult to pin down the exact origins. When you pin something down, well, you could be using a pin, a sharp thing that you、uh, use to hold a piece of paper, maybe to a, a bulletin board or a wall or something like that. That pin, you'll stick it through the paper or stick it through whatever you want to hold, and it will basically keep that thing in place. So when we use this expression. Of course, you might be pinning down a piece of paper, or pinning down, you know, your hair if the wind's blowing it, or something like that. But we would also use it to talk about getting the exact answer, getting the exact information you were looking for. My friend's arriving this afternoon. What time? I don't know. I have to check the、uh, the airline schedule to pin down the exact time. I think it's around 4 p.m., but I don't know exactly. If I pin down that time, I'll look it up. I'll get the exact information. Or where is my friend Jack? I don't know. I can't pin down his location. I don't、mm. know exactly where he is. I think he went downtown, but I don't know where he is downtown.、Well, I have the feeling he went over to Fulong or something to go surfing,、oh, but I'm、okay. not quite sure. But in any case, here, yeah. Yes, we don't really know where meditation came from. We can't really pin down its exact origin, but experts believe that its modern form has its roots in ancient Buddhist custom. Of course, Buddhism has been around for thousands of years, and beginning in India, Buddhism eventually made its way elsewhere, including China. So it's kind of interesting. Buddhism came from India, but Buddhism is not really a strong religion in India, but it's strong in other. Countries、uh, like Taiwan here, like Vietnam, Japan, Korea—it's strong in those places. But、uh, that's why we said it made its way elsewhere, including China. So elsewhere just means in other places besides the place we just mentioned. There you go. And then it says in the seventh century, so this is around the year 600, a Japanese monk traveled to China to study under a Buddhist master. All right, so it moved out of China eventually around the seventh century, and that was because a Japanese monk. Who had traveled to China? He studied under a Buddhist master, and we'll find out what happened after that in the next sentence. But we have this word monk. A monk is basically a holy brother. Sometimes they're called holy brothers. These are men 
who give their life to a church, give their life to a religion. They often live in a temple or a monastery. M O N A S T E R Y. In many religions, monks are not allowed to marry. They basically have to give up their life, devote their life, dedicate their life to serving their church, their god, their religion, and the people who come to them for help. So monks are often involved in charity works. They're often involved in helping people who need help. Be they old people. Some monks are famous for the things they make. Right? Monks, I think, think were the first people to make beer in Belgium and champagne in France.、Um, so they often dedicate themselves to an art or a skill. But basically, they're dedicating their lives, living in a church or temple or a monastery, and helping others in the name of their religion. Exactly, and I should mention that monks are male, whereas nuns are female.、Mm. So if you see people here,、uh, Buddhist monks, well, they would be the men, and the women would be the nuns. And so here we've got this Japanese monk going to China, and he studied under a Buddhist master. Please teach me all about meditation. And upon returning to Japan, or when this monk returned to Japan, he created the practice of zazen or Zen meditation. So zazen, I think the kanji for that is. Zuo Chan or Chan Xiao, as you say in Chinese. So Zen, of course, is Chan in Chinese, and you all know about that. Absolutely, yes. And this is the most familiar meditation practice today. So that's why we're kind of talking about it because there were many types of meditation in the past. But if you think about it today, most people are thinking about this Japanese style, this Japanese form. So the Zazen method is the most familiar meditation practice today. And here we describe it. In which a person sits with their legs crossed in the lotus position and focuses on their breath. So think of that person sitting on the ground, maybe in a temple or in a special meditation area, maybe even in their own home. You can do it in your own living room if you can find a quiet place at home. You sit on the ground. Your legs are crossed in the lotus position, so you're sitting down cross-legged, as we might say, with your feet sort of resting on your legs and they're they're folded underneath you. You close your eyes. Put your hands on your knees as you're sitting there, and then you focus on your breath, clear your mind, and begin meditating. I already feel relaxed just talking about it. Me too, indeed. And、uh, I wish we could sit in the lotus position in the studio here, but it's just not practical. But this is what you do: you cross your legs in the lotus position. A lotus, I believe, is a kind of flower、uh, which represents Buddhism a、mm-hmm. lot. And of course, you focus on your breathing. You focus on your breath. Now let's move on. To To the final paragraph here,、uh, meditation remained an Eastern practice for centuries, but when global travel became more common, the practice moved west, primarily through the studies of missionaries and scholars.、Hmm. So basically, it remained or continued to be something that was only done in the East, which of course refers to China, Mongolia, Japan, Korea, etc., etc. It was only here in the Far East, I suppose you could say. So it remained here. It Stayed here. It was only here. But then we've got global travel. People leaving their countries and ships and planes and traveling around. And of course, you got Westerners or people from other countries coming to China, coming to Japan, and they see this thing going on. Maybe they laughed at first, but they thought, "Hey, that looks kind of cool. You guys are all calm and collected. We'd like to learn that too." Absolutely. We also had the word primarily. Primarily is kind of like mainly. It was in other places. It was you know the people were meditating. Meditating in other parts of the world, but or by they learned methods of meditation from other ways, but mainly or primarily or the most common way, the number one way, was through the studies of missionaries and scholars. So primarily, basically, just shows us that this is the most important or the main one. But there could be others. For example, you might say most people fly into Taiwan primarily through the Taoyuan International Airport. Yes, you can fly in from maybe Hong Kong to Kaohsiung, but most people. Come primarily through the big airport in Taoyuan, and we also had this word: scholars, missionaries, and scholars. 
Missionaries, of course, are people spreading religion. Scholars are people studying things for their master's degrees or for their PhDs, or maybe they already have their doctorate degree and they're doing research on certain subjects and things like that. So you've got professors coming out here to Japan, to China, and wanting to know more about meditation. So its popularity in the West, in Western countries, exploded in the mid 20th century, which would be in the 1900s there, and it's. Since entered mainstream society, so it's now all around in Western countries, and it's still quite common here in good old Taiwan. Absolutely. When I was a kid, it was looked at as something a little strange. You know, people would do it, but some of their friends, you know, in in Western countries, would go, "Really? You're you're meditating? Like, well, why are you doing that?" It seemed a little weird, a little odd. But as we're going to find out tomorrow, more and more scientific studies have shown that it is really good for you, and also because it's Not so new and strange in the West. Now it's very, very common, and I would probably say that many people, many famous people, many well-known people,、uh, meditate very, very frequently. And it's maybe something you're getting into. So it's a very useful practice. We'll be finding out much more about that though tomorrow. Okay, so let's end our lesson now by listening to our Chinese teacher. 第三段要谈论冥想的历史，在第二句的前半段。要弄清楚冥想的起源很困难。It is 形容词再加 to f e e 这种句型与中文语法很不相同。事先表达情状，然后后面的 to f e e 不定词才是真正的主词。To pin down 明确说明。Pin 它原来的意思叫做大头针，当做动词的时候有固定住的含义。Pin down 引申为使某个人明确的说明。后半句的地方，但是专家相信，它现代根源是来自于古佛教的习俗。Has once root in something， 起源于 root 是名词，根或根源的意思。后面如果加介系词 in， 再加地方，就是表达从哪里起源的。在第三句，佛教来自印度，最终传到各地。Beginning 是分词构句，省略相同的主词 Buddhism， 动词 begin 变成现在分词。Make one's way 表示前进、前往，尤其呢是指很艰辛的历程。后面常搭介系词 to、into 或者是 through 等等，再加地方。第六句的后半段，逗点之后。In which 关系副词 ，which 呢，在这里是指整个上半句。In which 表示在那种情境中。另外呢，你也可以用 where 来代替 in which。With something 再加形容词，表示伴随着这个人或物是什么样子的情形。Crossed 交叉过去分词，说明它的脚啊是交叉的。而 in the lotus position，lotus 是莲花。In 什么什么 position 以什么形状，整个这个词组表示身体做成莲花座的模样。我们看最后一段的第一行，冥想呢，好几个世纪以来一直是东方的习俗。Remain 保持、保留，当做连缀动词，后面呢习惯加上一些形容词或者是名词来表示保持某种状态。同一句话的后半段。主要是透过传教士和学者的研究 ，primarily 副词主要的、初步的。那形容词 primary 就把 ly 拿掉 ，i 改成 y。后面的 missionary 是传教士，是教会中送到国外宣传宗教的人士。好，以上是今天的讲解，谢谢收听。That's all for today's lesson. Thank you for joining us. But as Mike said, we're going to continue talking about the magic of meditation in our next program. So please join us then. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Mike. Goodbye.